channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today we're going to look at my friend Ron's Monteverdi Impressa. He kindly loaned this pen to me for review and I'm ashamed to say I've had it since before Christmas. I've been making sure he isn't going without pens to write with in the meantime but I like this pen and I've been writing with it a lot. I just finished doing a review of the Conklin Durograph in black with rose gold trim and I thought I should probably finally do a review of Ronnie's gorgeous black and rose gold Impressa and get it back to him. This review also gives me the opportunity to compare this Monteverdi Impressa with its imitator, the Bauer 051. So let's take a look at this impressive pen right now. So let's look at this beautiful pen generously on loan from my pen friend Ron. What I want to do is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons and some measurements, and then do a writing sample. Please stay tuned after the writing sample where I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. This pen comes in this lovely coffin style presentation box, embossed with the Monteverde logo and the motto, a world of luxury and innovation. Monteverde is a U.S.-based pen company founded in 1978. The Pen Chalet has this to say about Monteverde. Quote, Dedicated to the notion of creating fresh new pen designs, Monteverde incorporates the finest European resins, celluloid, and carbon fiber into each of its writing instruments. They are distributed by Jaffa Brands of California, and a cursory look at the Monteverdi website shows an interesting variety of pen styles in a range of affordable price points. I'm particularly fond of the giant sequoia seen here and in a review by David Parker of Fig Boot on Pens. The box opens and here is the pen. Lift the bed and there is an instruction booklet on how to use your ballpoint pen and a warranty card. There's also a box of Monteverdi cartridges, but I believe Ron bought this in addition. Generally, the boxes contain a couple of Monteverdi cartridges, a black and a blue. Let me take the pen out, and let's give it its beauty pass. The first time I heard of the Monteverdi Impreza was when I bought this Bauer 051. I had watched and read a number of reviews of the Bauer, and the most talked about feature was that it was yet another Chinese ripoff of an American design. Hi, George Clooney, second worst Batman. Peter Griffin, second best Homer. However, I tend to agree with Matt Armstrong's speculation that Monteverdi has a relationship with Bauer and has their Impressa made by Bauer in China. There is no evidence that this is the case, but this pen is not made in the United States at this price point. It certainly looks like the same tooling is used, and Bauer has simply made a few design changes. The center band is wider, the end cap longer, and the main difference, the section is smaller and made of plastic, and the Bauer has a number 5 instead of a number 6 nib. But let's look at this Impressa. It is certainly a sleek, modern, and elegantly styled fountain pen. It is made of metal, and I'm assuming it's enamel-covered brass. From the top, we see a rose gold square finial with a hinged spring clip mechanism and a sleek, curved, and very nicely springy clip. This works very well and is impressive 
in that it is well done in both design and function. Those things that function well, but have an artistic and elegant design factor, get high marks in my book. Louis Sullivan's assistant, Frank Lloyd Wright, certainly took the idea into fascinating realms, from Falling Water, to the Guggenheim Museum, to Roger Van Dam's house on top of Mount Rushmore. Of course, I think our new Calgary library is even nicer than Lloyd Wright's Guggenheim, but I digress. The square top of the cap transition in a smooth taper to a round shape at the rose gold ring, which separates the cap from the barrel. The back of the cap has Monteverdi, USA, Impressa on the surface in a light gray paint that is a little too light for this stealthy pen. Would have been nicer if that branding was a little stealthier, a little darker. There is virtually no interruption from the cap through into the body and the ta it tapers down gently to about here where it tapers down a little bit more to an end cap that is in that same rose gold with a couple of engraved rings and a flat bottom. The cap snaps off to reveal a section made of the same rose gold metal and a number six black enameled Monteverdi branded nib. There is a cap liner which you can feel engage with the section before it makes a positive snap into that ring at the top of the barrel. The nib, like all Monteverdi's, has that stylized mountain design engraved on it. It's a little difficult to see here. It also has Monteverdi on the shoulder of the nib right there. The Monteverdi logo in the center and underneath it says Monteverdi and USA and a letter M engraved into the side for medium. That's a lot of Monteverdi in case you didn't know the brand of the pen. And a typical plastic feed. The nib and feed unit unscrews very easily for, for cleaning or for nib replacement, which is great. The section is tapered metal and there is a, a large ring at the bottom of the section before the number six nib. And there is a rather larger step up right here to the barrel, which is understandable since it makes that transition of the entire pen when it's capped uh, completely invisible and uninterrupted. The section is slick and metal, but because of that substantial bump right there, the bottom of the section, I don't find it uncomfortable to write with. In my grip, my fingers tend to rest against that little ridge, and it's uh, very comfortable. And that step up is not sharp on my thumb. It's certainly a lot less obtrusive than my Pilot Metro. That section unscrews, and we find a standard international piston converter. The pen will take standard international cartridges, but do not piggyback them in the barrel as that extra cartridge will get frustratingly stuck inside. My name is Timmy. Did Timmy fall in the well, Lassie? Did he grow? Timmy's down the bloody well. What's wrong, Lassie? Timmy fall down the well? <laughs> the cap posts deeply and securely and the pen is very comfortable in the hand. It back weights the pen just slightly, but it's not uncomfortable. And it's plenty long enough to write with it comfortably unposted. Now let's take a look at some size comparisons. So here is the Monteverdi Impressa with a Bauer 051 with a Conklin Durograph in matte black and rose gold a Parker Sonnet, and a Pilot Metro. And here are the pens uncapped. 
the Impressa with its number six nib next to the Bauer 051, you can see the difference between the sections. The 051 Bauer has a much thinner section and it's plastic. And then the number five size nib. The Conklin did have a number six black enamel nib, uh, Conklin branded, but I swapped it out for a, uh, a rose gold Natami nib. And there is the number five in the Parker Sonnet and the number five in the Pilot Metro. And now we'll do some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. Okay, now we're back with the writing sample portion of the review. In preparation for this review, I've been writing with Ronnie's Impressa for about a week. I'm glad to have this opportunity, as I had previously bought this Bauer 051, which now belongs to my wife, with the chrome cap and the white and black striped body. And then I bought this one in all black for myself. And I like both of those pens, which sold for about 10 bucks a piece. But this Impressa does outshine those less expensive pens in many ways. So, this is the Monteverdi. Impressa. And it is a medium steel nib. The ink I've chosen is KWZ or Queasy Azure number five. Let's check the wetness on this pen first. It's decently wet. And as to line variation, it is a medium line with no pressure. And then you push it a little bit. It's a steel nib, so you don't get much. But it is a little bit thicker because it starts as a medium. It doesn't go very far. As you can see. Let's listen to it right. It's very, very smooth in all directions. And as to reverse writing, it works very well. It isn't scratchy at all. And some fast writing. see that feed has no difficulty in keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about this pen? First, this is a really elegant pen. The way the aesthetics of the pen merge with its functions into a sleek and beautiful fountain pen is just sublime. The black shiny enamel matching the large black enameled nib with the rose gold accents make this pen really, really stand out. Looks aside, the pen also writes very beautifully. It is smooth and wet and ergonomically well balanced, both posted and unposted for long writing sessions. I also like that it takes standard cartridges. It is also affordable at $40 to $50 US and is available in fine, medium, broad, and 1.1 stub variations. And there are other finishes other than this black and rose gold. You can get it in gunmetal gray with red accents and black with chrome hardware. So what do I not like about this pen? 
Well, I have to think hard and nitpick a little. I'm not fond of metal pens in general, but that's just because I've been spoiled by some really fantastic resins on pens lately. This section is a bit small, but it isn't as small as the Bauer, and I said very nice things about that Bauer. The section is also a bit slick, but it's not as slick as my Visconti Van Gogh or my Faber-Castell Loom. So that's it. I can't think of any more knocks on this pen. So let me know what you think of metal pens in the comments below. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications of new videos. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.